Hello and welcome to the TIA discussion of the SOA's changes to the prelims exams that have just been announced last week. I'm Lee Gibson. I'm the director for the preliminary exam courses here at TIA and I also am the instructor for the SRM exam and for the Mass 1 exam. Hi, and I'm James Washer. I'm the CEO, and I also teach our FM and LTAM. Well, until there's no longer an LTAM course. Um, and as Lee said, we're just going to kind of go over the changes. We're also going to try to answer some questions that some students sent us in along the way. But I wanted to actually start with like the too long didn't watch version of the video, which is don't use this as an excuse to delay your progress on the exams. Seems like the SOA is changing the way the exams work like every couple of years now. So if you always, every time there's a change, if you're like, oh, well, I, I don't want to take this exam because they're going to remove a little bit of material two years from now, then you're just setting yourself up to not continue to make progress on, on these exams. So keep pushing forward. We'll get into some of the, to the details right now, but as Lee's going to talk about, there's actually more opportunities than less. So keep pushing forward. And the known is always better than the unknown when it comes to these exams, because every time there's a change, there's potential for there to be um, hiccups with how the exam is delivered, the content of the exam and stuff. So you're always better trying to get as much uh, that you can get done before the conversion happens, because you're always going to get conversion credit. No matter what you do, when you accomplish something, when you pass an exam, when there's a conversion, you're going to get some credit for that. So like, don't say, I'm not going to take an exam because that exam is no longer going to be around. No, go ahead and take that exam and get your credit. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the big thing to notice is, you know, regardless of anybody's arguments about whether it was easier to finish your ASA before the changes or whether it's easier to finish your ASA after the changes, the big point for you, if you're currently taking these exams, is that over the next, you know, 12 to 18 months, you have more options and more choices for how you're going to finish these exams than anybody that was sitting for the exams before and anybody that's sitting for the exams after. So in this window of time, you really have more options and more choices than you know than you would have had if there hadn't been changes. You're still welcome to go through the path exactly the way it was before as long as you finish it within the next year or two. But if you want to take advantage of the things that have changed, you can. So we'll talk more about that as well. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, all the changes that we're going to be talking about, these are based on documents from the SOA, which we'll show in the description, or we'll give links to those in the description below. So the first thing we're going to talk about the changes is what's actually not changing at all. And that's SRM, PA, or the VE system. So if you understand those under the old system, they're exactly the same under the new system. And, and the other, the first change that we're, so there's basically how many lead we come up with like five, four or five, yeah, four or five changes. different changes. Yeah. Four or five different changes. So we're going to try to talk about each of those four changes and then answer a couple of student questions that were sent in. So the first change is actually very small. It says the syllabus content for exam P and FM will be reduced. Now they don't tell us when this will be reduced. They, and they don't tell us by how much it's going to be reduced. So again, this is like, don't, uh, so the question basically is, should I take PRFM given that some material will be removed? So a student asks us this, and absolutely you should go ahead and take PRFM because we don't know when the new versions of PRFM are coming up. We don't know how much material will be removed, what material will be removed. We don't know. So just go ahead and do what's available out there. Also, we don't even know that that will make the exam easier, right? Because just because they've removed some material doesn't mean that magically you're going to be able to get less questions right or that the exam is going to be easier. They could actually ask harder questions on the remaining material. So very simple. If you still need to take P or FM, go ahead and take P or FM. And those should probably be the first two that you take, despite the fact of all these changes going on. Anything to add to that, Lee? No, I think that's exactly right. You, you don't want to count on just because the thing has less material necessarily being easier. It just means you're going to have the same number of questions over less material. That means those questions could be asking you know, things that are greater depth and require more of you than they did before. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easier. You definitely shouldn't just twiddle your thumbs waiting for the SOA to throw the switch on that one. Yep. Yeah, so I've got the next one, and that is exam IFM will be eliminated, which is a big shocker for everybody here at the Infinite Actuary. We've been working really hard to continually improve our IFM course for, I guess, you know, about a decade now since before it was IFM. And, uh, and so all of a sudden, a lot of that work has just sort of seems like it might be disappearing. But uh, it's an interesting decision by the SOA and certainly something that's worth spending some time thinking about. 
the last sitting of IFM is going to be in November of 2022. That means there's four sittings left as of this writing. Um, four not more sittings. The one, yeah, the one that's actually, there's a, a sitting that's just wrapping up right now. So not that one. Four more future uh, sittings still of IFM. Um, and so the questions here are, does my credit for IFM transfer to something? And the answer is yes. In some sense, you do get credit for ATPA, which we're going to talk about more in a minute. It's called Advanced Topics and Predictive Analytics. All right. And it's not really so much that you get credit for that exam, but more just moving forward, you can either use IFM or ATPA to satisfy that part of your ASA re requirement. Um, so if you take IFM, you don't have to take ATPA. If you don't want to take IFM, then you can take ATPA. ATPA isn't going to start sitting for a while. Again, we'll get more to, back more to that um, in the future or in, in a little in just a few minutes. Then the other questions here, really, there's a couple of them. One, I've passed PNFM. Should I take IFM even though it's being eliminated? And I think you can probably guess what we're going to say here. James already sort of alluded to it earlier, and that is, you know, yeah, you should go ahead and take IFM. And there's some good reasons for that. One, there's no reason to wait for the new exam. Two, we don't really know if the new exam is going to be easier or harder, and we'll talk more about that later on. Uh, and three, if you don't have your job yet, you don't really know if IFM is going to be a requirement for you or not. And frankly, if you finish IFM prior to the time that it's finished, you know, finishes up in November 2022, that still is going to give you something for both the CAS and the SOA, right? It always counts for the SOA, as I just mentioned, but it will continue to count. The CAS has already made an announcement that IFM will continue to count for their 3F exam requirement up through the end of uh, the IFM administration. We don't know what the CAS is going to do beyond that, but whatever it is, I think we can pretty well guess that it's not going to take place until 2023. So there's no sense waiting until that happens. Uh, and, and again, twiddling your thumbs while you wait to see what happens. IFM is a good next exam to take. Um, I wouldn't throw rocks at you if you decided you wanted to do something with relationship to this next part of the changes we're going to talk about. But IFM is probably still the next best course to take simply because you know, in terms of overall difficulty level, you have P and you have FM sort of your entry level exams. IFM is really kind of the next exam in terms of increasing difficulty level. And STAM and LTAM are still quite a good bit harder than IFM. And so trying to jump IFM and move on to STAM, there can be some reasons to maybe try that but it's going to be quite a bit harder than just going on into IFM. Absolutely. The other question here was, as an actuary waiting to take the CAS route, wanting to take the CAS route, should I be concerned about these new changes? And again, the answer is not really. You should proceed to take IFM and get whatever the new requirement the CAS is going to come up with here in a couple of years. Go ahead and get that out of the way. Again, especially if that's the next thing on your list. But frankly, with four more sittings of IFM and over 18 months you know, from now, if you're still sitting at the beginning of exam P and you want to go and go th go on the CAS side, you've got plenty of time to finish exam P, exam FM, and then still have a couple more sittings to do IFM after that if you want to. Yep, definitely. The CAS will, whatever they require after this change, you'll get credit for it. So no, no sense in waiting, even if you're planning to be a casualty actuary. So the next one is not as quite as drastic as uh, removing uh, an entire exam, but it is pretty drastic in the sense that previously, as you probably know, you had to take LTAM, long-term actual mathematics, and STAM, short-term actual mathematics. And long-term actual mathematics had both a multiple choice and a written answer component, but STAM was all written answer. And now these two exams are being replaced by a single 40 question multiple choice exam called FAM, Fundamentals of Actual Mathematics, which basically is 20 long-term questions and 20 short-term questions. And then you also need to do a written answer question, a, you know, written answer exam, but you get to choose between long-term and short-term actual mathematics. So that'll be like two and a half to three hours. We don't have all the details of that. So you will still have to, under the new system, you still have to take some written answer component, um, but you get to kind of choose between long-term and short-term. Um, now, this, this becomes very interesting depending on what you've passed uh, LTAM or STAM before the conversion. So if you passed LTAM, you'll get credit for the, the, the 20 multiple choice question section related to long-term mathematics, long-term actual mathematics, and you'll get credit for what are these things called advanced long-term actual mathematics is the written answer component and advanced short-term actual mathematics is the written answer component for 
the short term piece. So if you pass LTAM, you get the 20 credit multiple choice for the long term and you get the advanced long term. If you pass short, if you've passed STAM, you get the 20 credit multiple choice for FAM for the short term and you get the credit for the the advanced short term, right? So this opens up some some very interesting questions. Um, Lee, actually, did did I miss anything describing you know what's going to happen for the uh, no, transition? No, I think you there? did fine. Yeah, they, they they seem to be calling those FAM S FAM S for the the multiple choice questions from STAM, and then FAM L for the multiple choice questions from LTAM, and those are actually going to be separated into two different pieces for people that don't need both pieces. Right, for the right. first two years that the exam sits. And then yes, after that yes. first two years is over, you can't do that anymore. You have to take the entire and pass the entire FAM. Exactly. So if you've passed LTAM once they start offering this thing, then you only need to pass FAMS, the multiple choice section for short term. And if you've passed STAM, then you only need to pass FAML, the multiple choice questions for the long-term actual mathematics. So that's the main point. But how does this impact you now? Well, first of all, this FAM doesn't even start till October of 2022, right? So that's the next fall. And um, let's see, it will take old STM testing months for October and February and June. So it's going to happen at the same time that the STM happened. The last LTAM is offered in the spring of 2022. And the, the last STAM is in the June of 2022. And and for the for only for that first two years, so from October of 2022 to June of 2024, will F, FAM be split into these two different um, components, L and S. So I think the most important things are the questions that the students are asking, which is like, if I've already started studying for STM or LTM, what should I do? And I think the answer is if you've already started studying, just continue on whichever one that you're already studying. So in other words, some people, some students might realize, hmm, I can actually get away with not doing any written answer questions if I take STAM now and then I just take LAM uh, for the, or L F the, F -A -M. what's it called? FAM, sorry, there's so many, so many letters here. So I can just take STM now and FAM life contingencies and get away without taking any written answer questions. That's true, that's true, but I don't think it's worth doing that if you're already studying for LTAM uh, for LTAM currently, um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, any time that you've already spent is kind of wasted, and that gives you less time to prepare for STM for this upcoming sitting, whichever one you're planning to take. Secondly, um, the pa effective pass rates for both exams are more or less the same. They're very close when you look at the effective pass rates. So the goal really here is not to be avoiding, say, just doing written answer questions altogether, but increasing your chances of moving forward towards your ASA. And taking either one has effectively the same pass rate, so there's really no difference there. Also, I don't think it's that bad to actually get in some written answer questions in your preliminary studies before you get to the fellowship exams where everything is written answer and you're really hit hard by the written answer section because it's going to be a bigger shock to you if you have to take it in one of these huge fellowship exams versus one of these smaller um, LTAM type exams. So basically, if you haven't started, if you've started studying for one or the other, then just continue with that one. Like, let's say that you're studying for LTAM right now. Ideally, you pass LTAM now and go ahead and take STAM, you know, as your next exam. That's fine. Or if you're taking STAM now and you pass, that doesn't mean you shouldn't take LTAM the next sitting because it's about to go away. Go ahead and take it. And then if you don't pass it during the next sitting, then you'll be very prepared for the FAML questions, right? So basically what I'm saying is just continue on with whatever your current plan is. That's perfectly fine. You have plenty of time to get through. Now, if you haven't started studying, okay, I can see you know, a good reason to take STAM first in the sense that if you take STAM and don't pass it, and then you take another attempt at STAM and then you pass it, so then you can just kind of skip LTAM altogether and just do FAML. So let me just summarize that again. If you've already started studying, continue on the path that you're on. Continue on the path that you're on. And if you haven't started studying yet, then take STM first. Whew, I said a lot there. So Lee, you might, you might uh, want to fill in any gaps. 
Yeah, yeah. We had five points in the email that we sent out about this, but we combined them into four because really it was hard to talk about FAM without also talking about the advanced LTAM and advanced STM at the same time. So James kind of got stuck with a double whammy there in an extra long section. But I think he did a good job of explaining what to do. And, uh, and that was the part also where I was talking about uh, there was a student that asked, gee, I, I finished PNFM. Maybe I should skip IFM and go straight on to STAM. And, you know, like I said, I wouldn't throw rocks at you if you decided to do that. I, there, there can be reasons for, for, re, for trying to do that, but it is going to be harder um, to get into that STAM. It is a, a little bit higher level test than, uh, than the IFM course is. And there's still a lot of really good reasons to take IFM. And frankly, if you get into IFM and you really bust it, you might just be able to pass that thing and still have a couple more sittings to take STAM as well. So, um, yeah, it, you can really go either way in that case, but I would still say better to go ahead and, and do IFM next and, and hold on STAM until you finish it. So the next one, you know, I, I feel a little bit silly even talking about it too much because we just have so little information about this last change. And that is that they're creating, in, in place of the old IFM, a new predictive analytics exam, which is going to be called Advanced Topics in Predictive Analytics. So, ATPA. The ATPA exam is going to be the new exam, and it's going to start sitting in June of 2022, so next summer, and hopefully that means that we'll have a syllabus by around January of 2022, but we might not have a whole lot of other information until then. So for the next about six months or so, we may still just be waiting to see what, what comes of that particular exam. My guess is that they'll do something kind of similar to what they've done with exam PA. Well, they'll prepare modules for you to go through, and then there will be an exam at the end. The thing that's a little bit of a twist on this one is that this one's called a take-home exam, and we don't really know what that means. Um, I Every time I hear the word take-home exam, though, I kind of get cold shivers, because when I was in college, there were some physics professors that would give take-home exams, and they were by far and away the hardest exams of any exams we had to take the entirety of, of college. We were math majors, physics majors, people like that. Mm -hmm. They were just, they were really, really monsters because, you know, when you have a take-home e exam, people have extra time to, to finish it. And so you don't like, oh, I don't have to make the problems easy. I can make the problems hard because people have lots of time to finish them. And then, you know, and oh, and you can use sources. You can look things up. Well, if you can look things up, then I can make these questions really hard because, you know, you can look things up. So it, it, I don't think we should assume that just because something is a take-home exam that it's necessarily going to be easier. And that's really maybe the only thing that we have to contribute at this point, because we just have so little information about what this is going to look like. Could it could it turn out that it's easier? Yeah, yeah, that could true. That could be true. Could it turn out that it's actually harder? It could actually turn out to be harder than completing IFM in its current um, in its current status. So, again, until that becomes more clear, our recommendation is still going to be that you continue with IFM. If something happens in January, February, March next year, and we get more information about ATPA, and it does turn out that it's going to be really easy, uh, which I don't really expect. I don't think the SOA's purpose here is to is to make it easier to get to ASA. I think if they want to try to make it the same, and if they're going to make it the same, then that means the new exam, ATPA, has to be about the same difficulty level, even if it's a take-home, as IFM was, even though it's in person. And so... Um, yeah, we don't really know yet what will be the results of this uh, ATPA, but for now, it seems like the best call is still to continue to take IFM and not wait for ATPA. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Well, I think that's everything that we wanted to cover. So thanks for watching. And of course, if you have any questions, please let us know. You can email us at customerservice at theinfiniteactuary.com, or you can comment on the video below and we'll try to answer there. So thanks for watching. See you Absolutely. later. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Bye.